I, I felt like I was going to cry. Like, yeah, that's how crazy it was. I literally thought, like, any minute, I'm going to end up crashing. I'm going to hit the barrier or I'm going to crash into this car, this police car. I'm going to crash into someone and kill someone. And I had that just flowing through my head. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an exciting video for you today. I am about to phone Nathan, who was the driver of the Jaguar I-Pace that went out of control and had to be stopped by a police manoeuvre on the motorway just the other day. We're going to get his side of the story and find out more about this absolutely crazy situation. Nathan, how you doing? I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, not so bad, not so bad. Um, you've had an interesting week. No, oh, definitely. Have. It's been crazy. So, um, you're busy with talking to the police and, and I'd imagine yeah. insurance companies and basically everyone at the minute. Yeah, so, even, go, well, yeah, police, I've just been on the phone to police, I've been on the phone to Jaguar, uh, insurance companies, finance companies, even like people from the press just keep ringing and ringing me when they try and get a story out. Yeah, yeah, I, I bet. Um, so, how are you feeling? Um, well, I'm still... I don't know, it still hasn't properly sunk in. Yeah. It's still, it's still really, really, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Just, It just feels that weird. So this is the second time this has happened to you, right? Yeah, so second time. So it happened in December, just before Christmas. Talk me through, talk me through, if you don't mind, talk me through the first time what happened and how you felt and then we'll go on to what happened the second time so you, i'm just going to let you free talk and just explain because there's yes. a lot there's a lot of people in the comments and this is why i wanted to let you just get your story across there's a lot of people saying i don't believe it i think you know maybe, yeah. maybe you did something wrong maybe the carpet was stuck over the pedal so just talk us through it if you don't mind yeah so I've, yeah i was gonna say like i've heard that quite a lot and um like people saying that so yeah so the first time I was um, I was finishing work at three o'clock in the morning, and um, I was on my way home, and um, I got onto the motorway just near the traffic centre in Manchester, and um, the car literally just started speeding up. So I started obviously pressing my brake, putting the brake pedal down, and just wasn't happening. So, and then, so this uh, is the next thing what came into my head was obviously phone the police because. At the time, it was three o'clock in the morning. It's when Britain had the that was really really bad winds, and it was like chucking it down with rain. So you you uh, how have you not long accelerated onto the motorway then? So it's like you've accelerated on, and then the cars yeah, carried so, on accelerating. Yeah. So I've just come off the uh, M56. Yeah. Onto the motorway to head home towards the traffic centre, and um, just plodding along. And then next minute, it just felt like I was on a roller coaster. The car just literally shot forward. So, did it accelerate at, like, full acceleration? Did it feel like the throttle had been pushed straight to the floor, or is it just... Yeah, it, it literally felt like the, the pedal went straight down, and I was just, I just zoomed off. And you're hanging on for dear life at that point, I presume. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, like, what... It was, it, was, it was scary. Like, I've, I've never experienced that before. So... What happens next then? What 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 speed do you hit if you don't mind me asking? And then and then, so, how long does it take you to realise that you need to do something? So within within a couple of seconds, like obviously I phoned the police straight away, and I'm sure I was on the phone for about seventeen to eighteen minutes of what I recall from like talking to my insurance the other day, and um, I literally just phoned them straight away, and within within about two minutes, I had two two motorway police cars literally like alongside me yeah and i was doing i was reaching like speeds of like over 100 i think it was about one 120 something i was hitting wow like, the police officers they said at the time because they were in the um they're in the bmws yeah you know, their state bmws and they were saying at the time that they was struggling trying to trying to keep up with the car well these electric cars they're 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 pretty quick, so yeah, I, I can imagine. Crazy quick. They'd have been in a diesel BMW behind you, so yeah. So, so you're doing. So you got a 17 or 18 minute phone call. You're hitting speeds of up to 120. What are you doing in the car at this point to try and stop the car? Have you got anything at your disposal to try and slow that car down? Talk us through that. So when I was talking to the 
police operator on the phone. Um, he was asking, well, he was, he was really, really helpful at the time. He was um, seeing if I had, um, you know, like a handbrake. Yeah. But because like in the Jaguar I-Paces, they've just got buttons on the left-hand side. So they've got like our reverse, neutral, drive and park. So he was telling me to try and get the car into neutral. So yeah. I was there obviously pressing the button to get me into neutral and the button wasn't lighting up. Yeah. So obviously I had that into my back of my mind thinking, well, it's it's not stopping. So um, the guy said to try and do everything, just try and hit in this button. So we ended up just like hit, well, I ended up trying to hit in this button like as hard as I could. Yeah. And the light actually came on, but the car was still obviously going at speed. And that's when the... Um, the guy on the operator said um, the police are actually going to try and close me in. So the police car is going to go in front of me and the police car is going to go behind me. Have you and got then, your foot hard on the brake at this point then? Is the brake pedal just not doing anything? No, the brake pedal's not doing nothing at all. Wow. So in my back of my mind, I was thinking, well, it's like it's chucking down, chucking down with rain. It's three o'clock in the morning. There's loads and loads of wagons, like lorries on the on the motorway. In my back of my mind, thinking I'm, I'm going to end up hitting one of these lorries, or yeah, like it's, as, as I said, like it was chucking down the rain, and obviously it's hard to it's hard to drive in the rain anyway. Yeah, and if I'm running at that speed, yeah, so it was a good. It's hard to control. You were lucky for that one that it was three o'clock in the morning, and and the roads would have been clearer. So, so what happens next? Then you've got a police car. Have you got a police car with lights and everything behind you at this point, or yeah? So um, I had obviously the two police cars, flashing lights. Um, still talking to the operator and um, literally my hands on the steering wheel just looking forward because that's the only thing I could do is literally just look forward. Because I just thought like anything bad what I can do, I could end up killing myself or colliding with the police officers if I'm looking to see what they're doing or start panicking, you know, seeing like the police car hitting, like getting right in front of me. Yeah. So what happens next then? How do they stop the car? Talk us through that. So um, they stopped the car by pulling in front of me and then um, literally like I started go, going into the back of him and then because um, at this time then I got the car into neutral anyway so the car was actually slowing down. Right. So you so, hit, you uh, hitting the button really hard eventually put the car into neutral. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I literally started, sm I, I just started punching the button. Yes. Yeah. Trying to get this button to light up and get me into neutral. And um, eventually then it did get me into neutral and the car started slowing down and the police car in front of me started to brake, like to slow the vehicle down and yeah. I started like hitting the back of the police car. How, how long uh, do you think in terms of distance do you think it took to stop the car? Um, you must, I mean, you must have covered some ground because by that point you're doing what, 80, 90 mile an hour? So still pretty, yeah. still pretty quick. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure of the covered, like what, how to stop, but... I knew when I was sat in that police, when I'm sat in the in my car, it felt like I was driving for hours, and it just wasn't stopping. <laughs> wow. Even though I was only driving for like twenty minutes, yeah, twenty five minutes, kind of thing. So your car then starts to come down to a sensible speed. I presume at that point you've got flashing lights all around you, and the roads clearing. So where where did you, where did you do your car come to a stop? So it comes to a stop onto the. Well, pretty much on the hard shoulder and still in the the first lane. Yeah. So it literally out, they was trying to guide me over, but my car literally just conked out and stopped. Wow. And that's when they surrounded the car. Yeah. Their police car, like trying to trying to block it just in case it rolled or started to jump forward again. And um, what what were the police like? What was the conversation like? How were you? You must have been covered in sweat and shaking by that point. Oh, that's you right. So. Um, Literally, like, I, as soon as I stopped the car, my seatbelt obviously came off straight away and I got out the car. And um, the police officer literally came straight over to me and put my arm around me and just, like, told me to sit in front of his police car and just chill out. Yeah. And then he was, he, the police officer was then saying, like, oh, obviously the car isn't safe. He was asking me, like, questions about what happened. And then, obviously, I was answering him. And um, he was saying, like, he's... Um, He's, well, he's heard this before with one electric car, but he's never actually seen it himself. Wow. So he, he was aware of it happening. Yeah. 
you know, because he, he was saying like um, he's seen it through, well, he's seen it and heard it through um, people who are like talking about it in work. There was another case. I, I think it was in Scotland. I can't remember if it was an MG or the. Yeah, I think that's what I think. What that's what he said. It was an MG. Yeah. And again, the, that that gentleman as well had all the same problems that you had with people saying, "Oh, you just got the pedal stuck. Oh, it was the yeah. carpet over the pedal," um, but but quite clearly not. So, what happens next to the car then? The car gets, I presume, recovered. You get a lift off the motorway. Surely they don't make you drive that car home. Talk us through what happens no, next. So um, they, well, they pulled up alongside me. Obviously, I got out and then I phoned my insurance company to get me recovered, and. Um, the police stayed with me, and um, I got recovered off the off the motorway. But the um, the guy who was recovering me, who was working for the recovery service, he didn't trust the car, so um, he literally opened the the front trunk at the front and dislocated, um, like took the battery, well, took a wire off the battery. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, the twelve volt the car, and then the car go through the cabin. What he was saying, he said he literally did not trust it. That's a scary thought, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like plus like hearing that from him, saying like he didn't trust the car, and the police even said like they don't trust the car. So, they, they, they both said like the car shouldn't be on the road. So where does the car go next then? So the car, the car actually went to Jaguar in Bolton, and um, literally like it was there. Well, yeah, it was there for about three days and then i got a phone call saying come and cut the car they can't find a fault that's pretty shocking i think on jaguar's part what was your yeah, reaction too, too what was your reaction right. to that so at the time well i've had experience with um doing this jaguar garage anyway because the car's been in about three or four times maybe five times with like battery problems sounds so like an eye pace it's been in there that many times and they're just phoning me up saying like they can't find a problem or the car just needs to be updated and to come collect the car. So I literally went to go and get the car, took the car back to my house, which was only about five miles, 10 miles away. And I'm losing, I'm losing charge. I'm losing about 30, 40 miles of charge of range. So there's, there's clearly something wrong with the car then, but either yeah. they did, how bothered were they by the fact that the car had turned up on a low loader having just been stopped by the police? Was that not quite high up their priority list? Were they, did they care? Um, not, at the, not at the time, no. So the, the car came and it took a day for them to... They told me they were going to look at it through, um, through the same day it got delivered to them. Yeah. Um, and then I phoned them. I phoned them back up at about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, asking, um, has the car been... Have you looked at the car? And they were like, oh, no, sorry, we haven't got time. We're going to be doing it this day. And then, obviously, it started getting towards Christmas. That strikes me as odd, because as far as I would be concerned, your car would be the most important one in the workshop because of the circumstances that it went there. Yeah, it's you right. But all they were saying, like, they only had one uh, electric technician. Right. What was covering, like, the local areas. So from, like, Bolton to, like, Rochdale to, like, Manchester, they had one guy. So, they tell, right, let's just get this straight then. So they tell you, come and get the car, there's nothing wrong with it. You drive it home and notice that it's losing, like, loads of charge. And yeah. then, obviously, that's before Christmas. We're now in March. Did the car play up again between Christmas and March? Was there anything else it was doing? Did you have any indication that it might happen again, or had you got your trust back in the car? Um, I kind of had the trust back in the car, so... When I when I got the car back, it was it was it was still doing the same. I was still losing, I was still losing my miles, but obviously it wasn't doing anything stupid like what it was doing. Yeah. So I I charged the car up, and I I probably got about two hundred in two hundred thirty miles from like a full charge. Yeah. But I used to I used to just lose that charge, or if I can put it into like a different mode, so you would think. In the eco mode, I'd get more miles of range, but if I put it into sport mode, you'd get more more miles of range with the sport mode. What I, I couldn't understand. That doesn't normally make sense, does it? Car, you normally put it in eco, you get more miles. Right, but okay, so it certainly seems that the car's doing things that aren't quite correct then. Yeah. Oh, like I even showed um, Jaguar this as well. Um, when they, because obviously when I dropped the car off, I got one of the guys to come out and have a look. 
and I was showing him and he was like oh this is really weird like I've never seen a car come in and get more miles from putting it into sport mode than eco mode so it seems then that there's obviously something in the electrics that's not quite right if those two settings have like inverted themselves was it yeah, no. was it driving like it was in sport mode or eco mode was it was it driving like it was in that correct mode or do you think those had inverted as well uh, no so when I, when I was in eco mode you can tell it was in eco mode but when you put it into sport mode you can tell right it's 100 it's in sport mode okay so it, it's it's not quite right then but anyway so you you, you carry on and time goes past so talk talk us through this uh this latest incident then yeah so um in the morning the car was all fine like i was going to well just started a brand new job so i was going to training yeah so i've been there like monday and tuesday and um the car was all fine so i was on my way home and um I needed to turn back towards my work because I forgot some from work what I needed to take home with me. So I went back round the roundabout, come back onto the motorway, and um, I was indicating to get into the the fast lane. And next minute, the car just shunted forward. Like it, it felt like, as I said before, like I was on a roller coaster. Like your back goes back, like you, you go back in your seat. Yeah. And then next minute, the car just kept on speeding up. And I was pressing my brake, had my foot on the brake, and there was nothing happening. Literally nothing happening. The the speed was just rising and rising and rising. And what, what are you thinking at this point? I was thinking, oh, it's happening again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, you, you you know what to do. You know that the you've got your brake. So... I, <laughs> so you know that it's happening again so are you are you on the phone straight away to the police yeah and... so i phoned i phoned the police straight away and um the operator literally just told me to get onto the onto the hard shoulder um put my indicators on yeah and literally just avoid anybody who's on the hard shoulder they advise you to go on the hard shoulder that's yeah In... told me to just just get onto the hard shoulder doing 90 down the hard shoulder <laughs> Wow. Okay. So obviously that was scary because you had junctions coming off as well. And obviously I was telling the operator this on the phone. He was like, right, just make sure it's clear in the first lane to get into the first lane and then jump back onto the hard shoulder. What's the traffic doing around you? So at the time it was it was about half two, three o'clock and it was building because traffic was actually coming from like Southport and like Ormskirk and that so the traffic was actually building up and like the worst thing about it there was um, I was coming to end of this motorway and there was a roundabout and I needed to join another motorway um, and they had like a, it was a red light so obviously I was telling the operator panicking everything was going through my mind thinking I need to get through this this red light or I'm gonna end up smashing into all these cars and maybe smashing into like an oncoming car as well but the operator told me to try and do it safely to get through the red light, stay on the hard shoulder kind of bit and literally just get through. So what happened? So I ma managed to obviously get through, get onto the other, other side of the motorway and I was staying on the hard shoulder and then next minute I seen um, those two police cars, is it the Matrix police cars, literally right behind me. And um, he pulled in front of me telling me to follow him and he was trying to take me off... Um, well, off like um, off the motorway onto like a layby kind of thing, and but like I couldn't go, I couldn't, I literally couldn't because obviously the car was going too quick. What what what? I, I couldn't brake because he wanted me to go down this layby and then turn off and then go down this other road and obviously try and pull up, but I honestly couldn't. So, are you on the phone to the operator at this point? You, I mean, you don't have direct communication with that police car, do you? And no, what... no. So, I was on the phone to the operator, and um, I was telling the operator everything. Like, I couldn't go off, and he was like, right, I'm, we'll be telling the the main police car who's in front of you. And then, obviously, then I was panicking because the police car was actually... He was, do, he, he was doing all right speed, but my car was going too quick, so I, I just kept on hitting the back of him. Wow! Just kept on nudging his car, and my car was—you could tell my car was hitting his because his car was like say like swaying side to side. And um, so I, I presume he's in a five, a BMW five series estate then. So no, so he was in a yeah, yeah. Sorry, yes, he was in a five series estate. Yeah, 
So your your Jaguar would have been heavier than his car. So from his yeah. point of view, you know, it's pretty scary for both of you at that point, isn't it? Yeah, so I couldn't even see his number plate. I was literally that close to the back of his car. Like, I just kept on seeing my car just... Uh, you can just feel like a little nudge into the front of his car. But we were still on live, like, on the live motorway. So I had, like, the fast lane and the lane next to me. And the slow lane was still, like, active. So I was obviously bombing down the motorway at 90 to 100. And all these cars on the other side who don't have a clue what's happening are all staring, looking, beeping. So that, God that, knows what they were thinking at the time. That's absolutely yeah. terrifying. What were, what were you thinking at the time? Oh, to be honest, I was literally... Well, I, I couldn't think. Yeah. Literally, I had my hands on the steering wheel just looking forward. I, was, I literally thought, like, any minute I'm going to hit the back of this police car. This police car is going to sway, hit the barrier. I'm going to go into that. I'm going to end up killing him. I'm going to end up killing myself. Or I'm going to end up killing, like, a member of the public who's just driving, just driving home from work or with kids in the car. I had all that in my back of my mind. I was telling like the operator and he was like trying to calm me down, saying like, Oh, they're all trained for this. It's, it's shocking. To hear to hear you to tell it that way, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes and it is truly terrifying. Oh, to, to you like literally like I was I, I felt like I was gonna cry. Like yeah, that's how crazy it was. I literally thought like any minute I'm gonna end up crashing. I'm going to hit the barrier or I'm going to crash into this car, this police car. I'm going to crash into someone and kill someone. And I had that just flowing through my head. So, but like, fair play to the, the, the operator who was on the phone to me that all the time was, like, he was calming me down. He was, like, telling me to breathe and telling me not to worry. These police officers are, are trained to do this. So he was, he was trying to make me feel all right about myself for doing it, like, obviously driving yeah for being in the car i've got an electric car just trying to park next to me right now i'm keeping a close oh, really? eye on it um so how, how does how does this uh i'm going to call it a police chase but it's not really a police chase is it it's it's um it's an it, outrun it, yeah it literally felt like i was playing grand theft auto or i was playing like a police game or a racing game on like the playstation or xbox literally like i was I was literally right behind this police car, and then uh, there was um, there was another police car literally alongside me, like beeping, um, obviously flashing lights, moving other cars away from these lanes. It's, it, was, it was it was literally just scary, just seeing like how close I was to it, like, it, other traffic. It's a it's a crazy crazy situation. So um, how does it? How does it start to get under control? At what point do you start to feel safer? What happens next? Well, um, I was telling the well, the operator was saying like how many miles of range I had, and um, before all this happened, I had about fifty to sixty miles of range in the car, so that would have got me to to my work and then back home, and most probably back to work the next day, but and then charge it, ch well, charge it Thursday night coming yeah. home. So I knew I had all right charge in the car. So the operator was like telling me the police have um, confirmed they're going to keep me on the motorway, keep me on the road to when my car actually dies. You were looking at the range at that point thinking, i got to do this for 50 miles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then um, literally like I was, um, he was, the operator was telling me like how many miles you got left. And I was like, oh, 20. And he was like, right, we're going to be still here for like 20 miles, like telling us. And I was Obviously, that was going through my mind as well, thinking I'm just still going to be stuck doing this. But the charge was actually going down quite quick. Yeah, I'd imagine yeah. it was. If the car's accelerating and if the car's malfunctioning anyway, I'd imagine that yeah. charge was dropping off quite quick. So you must have been relieved to see it coming down. Yeah, well, I was I was literally counting down. Um, the operator was telling me, he was just like, oh, we're telling the police like how many miles you've got left. And we literally started. I literally started counting down. Wow! I was like, oh, I've got, I've got, I've got ten miles. I've got nine miles, and literally, like, it was so, it was so good knowing like I was coming down to like five miles. And all, but, all the while that you're counting down the miles, have you still got this police car directly in front of you? Then? Yeah, yeah. So um, the the police car is literally direct in front of me. Like it, it didn't move once. Like the pictures what I've got on my phone of what the police told me to. Uh, 
to take for my my insurance company to look at this police car it looks like it's wedged with my car wow so like as soon as well as soon as the car actually comes to a stop um well it, it comes down to like the last three miles and the operator said the the, the police car in front of me is going to it's going to speed off a little bit yeah and then hopefully then i'm just going to hit the back of his car because i was still doing the well the car was still being quite quick yeah and i had like a certain amount of miles left and i was i was explaining this like when i know it goes into limp mode so normally when when it goes into like low battery mode it goes into like limp mode i can't go over like a certain amount of speeds but this car was still going quite quick right okay so it's like it's it's not behaving as normal yeah well this, this is what this is what i told the police and like everything like everybody else like the car felt like it it wasn't in limp mode it was just just carrying on the way it was wow but like thank god it did actually have like no miles and the police car like sped off in front of me i just literally hit the back of his car and the car eventually stopped so you rolled to a halt and I don't think yeah. you were you weren't on the hard shoulder, were you? Were you still in the live Yeah, I was still in the fast lane. I was still in the, the third lane or the fourth lane. So what happens then? You jump out the car and the policeman says, Oh, it's you again. <laughs> yeah, well, um I literally I just sat in the car because obviously with the Jaguar I base the, the door handles are inside the vehicle. So I had to obviously press the button on my side and my door handles come out the car. So the police the police guy literally come over to my car. My hands were still literally on the steering wheel, just looking forward. And he was banging on the window. And then I literally just took my seatbelt off, got out the car and I just like, just leant against my car. And this police officer then came over to me, like give me a drink of water, like trying to calm me down. Cause yeah. obviously I was, I was in bits, like thinking like, I've just actually just survived this. That's a I bit crazy then. So. That, that's really interesting. You've got a driver that is clearly in a, like a bad way and needs some help, and yet you've got to let the police in to pop the door handles out the side of the car. He can't get in to help you out. No, no. So, yeah, the door handles stay in the car. So, so when I press the button inside the car, no one can get in. No one, like, no one can get in the car. That's pretty scary on its own. So yeah. you have your glass of water. You, you try to calm down. Um where does it where does it go next what like where are you so, now what's happening i know so you've had... I literally i well i said to the police officer like i just needed i just needed to just like stand there and just look what's happened so they, the, the police officer told me obviously not go next to the barrier where the oncoming traffic was on the other side so i just literally just stood in the middle lane just looking down the motorway of where my car was all these police cars literally like it it felt like I was in like a big police chase. How many like, how many police vehicles have you got cars. around you at that point? Do you know how many police vehicles there were? Yeah, so there there must have been about seven or eight. So I had um, right next to me was a is it a, um a, a, I think it was a Cooper, one of the well one of the rapid Coopers. Oh, so yeah. I had one of them like alongside me, and yeah. then obviously the, the BMW in front of me, another car, another BMW right behind me. And then um, other cars like alongside, like behind the behind the other police cars. So, was there any damage on the on either the I Pace or the BMWs? Then I presume. I that... literally, I literally don't know because <laughs> my car was that wedged into the the back of this other police car. I, I literally do not have a clue. And I don't think mentally you would have been in any position to have a look around, would you? You were just concentrating no, on the fact no, that you were alive. No. Yeah. So he literally just told me to obviously get out of the car, have like a little break. Get a picture in. Told me to, um, if well, take me to um, like a safe place kind of thing to get me off the motorway. Yeah. So do do you know what happened to your car next? Then I presume you were gone and having a coffee, and then eventually the car got picked up. Yeah. So the um, the police have actually took it to a a site, and I've just literally phoned them this morning to see um, if I can go to it and can because like Jaguar Jaguar want the car, but. The police have said. Well, the the company have said. Like the police have said, no one's allowed near the car. Wow. So uh, I don't know if the police are investigating into it or looking into it, but no one's allowed near the car. So when the so when the police have said, well, the police can confirm the car can be allowed to be picked up. 
Okay, if, if I can ask a stupid question that I know everybody's going to want to ask, um, is anyone blaming you for this? Is there, Are you feeling like anyone is saying it is you, or is everybody pretty much understanding that this is the car and this is the software? Well, um, at the time, well, the first experience when I went into the Jaguar garage, they were saying, like, oh, they've never, never in their lifetime heard this happen to, like, a Jaguar or anything before. And then when I, I went back into, like, the Jaguar garage and just spoke to them, just explained what's happened, they uh, they couldn't believe it again. They were, like, shocked it's actually happened. Yeah. So... So there's some head scratching going on between. It's it's interesting that the police are saying no one can have the car. I wonder if the police are going to want to do their own investigations to find out. You know, it, it's just interesting as to who who is going to find out the problem with the car now. Will it be the police and their forensics? Will it be Jaguar? Will it? I I don't know. I, 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 yeah. So I've actually got Jaguar like the proper Jaguar main office like ringing me up and they're saying like they want to invest the car as well. Yeah. Want to have a look inside the car, look at all the, all the, um, all the um, computers inside the car, the software. They want all that out so they can look at the car. Well, imagine, you know, somewhere within the technology of that car, there'll be a sort of, you know, like a plane has a flight recorder. Yeah, then... yeah, that's that's what they said. They um, they'll be able to put it in like a diagnostic kind of thing, and that everything will just literally flag up of what's up with the car. Yeah, so they'll be able to see that the car was accelerating and your foot wasn't on yeah. the pedal. I'd imagine but, they'll but find like all last that. Last time when it went into Jaguar, I've had all these diagnostics for the problems with what my car was, and I'm getting the car back. And the problems what I had with the car is not on the diagnostic. So wow, okay. So what happens next for you then? Do you think you're gonna uh, are you gonna want to keep this car? Is this? I mean, you're no, you're no, so um, I've. Well, I've decided anyway, and I've been speaking to um, head office in Jaguar, and they're, they're telling me I'm not going to get back into that car. Yeah, I'd imagine not. It's now a, a, effectively a piece of evidence and hot property. So you... Yeah, de well, definitely. Knowing like it's happened, it's happened twice, I'm having problems with the battery anyway. So it's really it's a, a red flag, really, isn't it? So have they provided you a car, or have you got one through your insurance? Or? Yeah, so um, Jaguar have actually provided me a car. Is it an electric one? No, so it's uh, <laughs> they gave me a, rain, a brand new Range Rover Sport. Nice. So yeah, I've got one of them for to when the well everything else, uh, all this is sorted. Yeah. Well, look, it's um, it it's crazy. Um, I think you're I think you're pretty brave for having put up with it twice. And yeah, um, everyone keeps saying that, like, fair play. I, I put up with the car. Yeah. But what could you have done? I mean, the thing is, if you sent this car to Jaguar in December and they turn around and said it's fine, and I assume it's on a finance agreement, it's not like you can just get rid of it. Yeah, so, no. So I phoned the finance company and um, they obviously wanted the diagnostic reports. It has to go into investigation. And... Obviously, with the diagnostic um, reports coming back of the car not going in for like what I wanted the car going in for, it wasn't on the diagnostic. Yeah. So really, I was I couldn't do nothing. Yeah, because the official line at that point from both Jaguar and the finance companies, there's nothing wrong with the car because we can't nothing find wrong. anything. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's what they said. The only time they can write off the car is on this diagnostic. There is there is something on there. Wow. So they kind of sent you back out in, into the world for it to happen again, and it really is a blessing. It, it really did, yeah. It's literally, I felt this time was a lot worse than just before Christmas. Like, yeah. Obviously, but just before Christmas, it was late. It was chucking it down with rain, but there was hardly any traffic on the road. This time was pretty much rush hour coming out of coming out of like Liverpool, pretty much or Ormskirk or whatever it was. Yeah, going back into Manchester, and obviously people are going to be coming home and coming past the traffic centre. It's going to start. It's going to start building up and starting to get busy. Why? Why do you think it didn't make the news first time round? Was it just because the roads were quieter, or? Yeah, so I'm not actually too sure to be honest. Um, like this is what I was, what I was shocked about, is that I wanted people to to know this has happened. Yes, yeah. I was. I literally put it on. Um, I was on. I was on pages on um, Facebook of like the Jaguar I paces, 
So people like putting comments of like uh, what's happened with theirs or if they've got like trouble with theirs, like people help them out. So I put my, my story into there and literally everybody was like slating it, like it didn't happen. I'm just a young lad who was driving a high performance car. So that's what people were saying. <laughs> yeah. And again, that that's why I really wanted you to just freely talk and get your story across. Um, because you're always going to have people that are going to say that. But again, the reaction of the police, they've, they've got the operator on the phone. They know what's going on. They know the story. It's not like they're pulling out, of, you know, pulling you out of the car saying you're under arrest for speeding. Yeah, because I, I said to him today and I was like, oh, so all these speed cameras were, well, some of them were flashing. And then when I was speaking to the police officer, they told me if I do get any letters through the post to send them straight to them and they will be able to sort it out for me. You'll have to keep me posted then, because that'll be an interesting story of itself to see, A, how many you get, and B, what this... Because all of these are automated. It's not. It's never a person that deals with it. You'll have just triggered these cameras, and the letters will be on the way. So it'd be interesting to see how many cameras you went through and what speed you went through them as well. Yeah, I know. That's going to be... That will be interesting. Well, you get these sent back to the police and get them dealt with, but then I think that's something to put on your wall, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. See what see what high speed I got to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, you've had a couple of days to calm down now. Uh, I think you're going away somewhere for the weekend, aren't you? Uh, how are you feeling yeah. about it all? And what, what would you like to see happen next? So, obviously, I want the car to fully get checked over. I want the I want them to literally strip the car down, or do whatever they want, and find the problem what I've been having since getting the car in last March. Like I've had, it, was, it feels like a nightmare having that car. Yeah, the car is actually a nightmare. Like I've had it, had it since March last year, coming up to a year, and I've not, I've always had problems with it. So I want them to literally find everything what's wrong with it, and I'll be able to prove them right then. Yeah, I think it, and I think the general public as well are going to be interested to know what's gone wrong with that car, and everyone else who's got an eye pace because I know full well that the eye pace has been a very problematic car for Jaguar. But this has got to be now. Now that your second story is getting out and people are realizing that you aren't just a young lad with his foot stuck beneath the carpet. Yeah. There's more to this. I'd imagine that this is a uh, this is going to give the wobbles to some eye pace owners as well, don't you? Yeah, it de definitely should because obviously the car's been out for. I think it's about six years or five years or whatever, and then they're stopping it in 2025 as well. So it's just it's literally worrying, thinking if this has happened to mine, what's not going to stop theirs doing this? Yeah, because obviously you said and I've, I've, well, I've, I've read as well about the the MG happening as well. So if it's happened to mine. It's happened to an MG. What's not going to stop a like a BMW electric car or even an Audi or another Jaguar doing exactly the same thing. Or or indeed it happening to someone else. I mean, you were obviously fairly quick thinking and recognised, the. you know, go back to the first incident, you recognised quite quickly there was a problem. And although yeah. it was stressful, you remained calm enough to phone the police and talk them through what was happening whilst driving this out-of-control car. If that had happened to, you know, a little old lady or anybody else, it, it, the outcome could have been completely different, couldn't it? Oh, so, yeah, so you're right, 100%. It was just literally, I just thought, wow, well, I'm going to end up like hurting myself or hurting like, somebody. So the best thing was to obviously phone the police to see if they can shut the motor away or come to, like, come to my safety, pretty much, trying to stop the car. Now, another stupid question then that I think the internet is going to want to know. Was it fun at any point? Uh, well, be it the first time ever being in a police chase, like... That's the best. That was that was that was a nice feeling, a I'd, good feeling. I'd imagine it's the sort of thing that's only fun afterwards when it's all over. I'd imagine yeah, at the time. That's too right. Probably yesterday, a proper sunk in. I was like, wow, I had all these police cars behind me. I had people still driving their cars and probably on the way home or seeing family in the other lanes, literally just watching my car in behind this other police car, nudging this police car. I wonder what they were thinking at the time. I was just going to say the same. I mean, if you see something like that on the motorway, the things that go through your head. My car is all blacked out. So I've had like everything, everything on the car is all blacked out. 
So it does look like a dodgy car. So <laughs> go, going at that speed, nudging a police car, you're thinking the worst. You're thinking, what have I done? Well, you're probably the only person that has managed to have such a dramatic police chase and then not gone to jail. So congratulations. I know. Yeah, I feel good about that. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Uh, honestly, thank you so much for taking the time to talk oh, to me about this. It. I'm I'm really glad you were able to just uh, explain what happened. And hopefully for people watching, um, it'd be interesting to see what the comments are on this one now. So I'm going to keep an eye on this story see what happens next uh, from Jaguar, from the police, and, you know, in the electric car community generally. Yeah. Um, would you think you'd get another iPace? No, definitely not. Yeah. 100%, 100 not. I'll never, never get an electric car. Like, yeah. I got told when I first got it, electric cars like the best thing, and they're cheap to run, but they're, they're definitely not. So prior to prior to the two out of control things, what were you like with the car generally? You said it had problems anyway, or how soon into owning the, the iPace did you start to think, hang on a minute, this isn't all it's cracked up to be? Um pretty much within a month and a half. That's not great, so, is it? Because that's an no, expensive so I car. I got the car in March and I think it went in for went into Jaguar in May. So pretty much straight away. That's painful, isn't it? For you know, it's a lot of money. It's not a cheap investment. No, definitely not. One hundred percent not. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much. I'm going to let you go. Thanks so much for speaking to me. Yeah, I and um, it. yeah, I'll keep keep in touch and let me know when all those speeding tickets come through. <laughs> yeah, I definitely will. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thanks very much. That'll do for the end of the video, dude. Thank you so much for that. That's amazing, dude. I think you're. I think you're a legend. I think. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Honestly, from doing my video yesterday, I, I think it was, you know, it's all fun and games. But when you actually describe it, it's terrifying. It gives you chills. Uh, so you're right. Like, I, I went into work yesterday and, like, all the girls in work were just dead worried. Yeah. Literally, like, they were just saying, like, I've, I'm literally everywhere. I'm all over the news. Literally, I've had, like, news reporters, like message me i've had people from the radio message me it's well just, this is the thing crazy. it's one of those stories where i got sent it once and because of what my channel's about and the kind of stories that i cover i just knew that if i didn't go and make a video about it there and then my inbox would just fill up with people sending me this story <laughs> it's like, yeah but it, I, I can't believe like how quick it blew up literally like within within about an hour it was um it was on facebook and um, I think it was like Northwest Police put a picture of my car, and then next minute I was just seeing people's videos of my car, like stuck between these two police cars. I wonder if anyone will have a video of your car flying past. I wonder if someone was filming in that traffic. Maybe it'll come yeah, out in the coming days. Say, hopefully, if someone's got a dash cam or something and seeing this all happen, then hopefully they reach out because I, I would definitely pay to, to watch that. There we go then. So if anyone's got the dash cam footage, please, please send it in. Send it to us both, definitely. Brilliant. All right. Thank you very much. I'll, uh, I'll chat to you later on. I'll keep in touch. I'll send you a WhatsApp and just see how things are. And, you know, I'm really keen to see where this one goes. So I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, keep in no, touch with you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Nathan. Okay, Take care. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what a story. That is absolutely insane. And... I'm quite happy to rein my neck in and say, um, although I presented a video that was fun the other night, making light of this, it's not. This is a pretty serious situation. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. And I'll check in with Nathan again um, as that story develops, because I'm not going to let this one go. We need to find out what went wrong with the car. And that's it. We need to find out what went, well, what went wrong with the car. If you've got footage of that chase chase on your dash cam jeff buys cars at gmail.com thank you for watching please do hit the like button and the subscribe button because it helps cheers